My equipment has a few leaks I could not fix, so I'm using data from a demonstration video. Please refer to the link at my website for the demo. Here is our lab problem. A 512 Hz vibrating tuning fork is held just above a pipe. A large water cup connected to the pipe can be raised or lowered to adjust the water level in the pipe, and therefore change the length of air column in the pipe. As the water level is lowered from the very top, the first resonance is heard at L1 equals to 15 centimeters, the second resonance at L2 48 centimeters, and the third resonance at L3 82 centimeters. A. Find the speed of sound in air using these data. B. We know that the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second at 15 degrees Celsius. Was the temperature in that lab higher, lower, or equal to 15 degrees Celsius? Justify your answer. Speed equals to the frequency times the wavelength. Which of these stay the same for the different lengths of air columns? The speed of sound in air depends on the root mean square speed of the air molecules. Since it's the same temperature, the root mean square speed should be the same. Therefore, the speed of sound in air should stay the same in all three cases. And we're using the same tuning fork. That means uh, the frequency also stays the same. That means uh, the wavelength has to stay the same. And since the length of one loop is always the half a wavelength. That means the length of a loop also has to stay the same. Now let's draw the standing waves in the pipe. We're looking at the standing waves in a column of air, and the tube has one open end and one closed end. So we should have an antinode at the opening and a node at the water surface. Because L1 is the first resonance when water is lowered from the top, this must be the fundamental frequency. And it looks like this, with a half a loop inside. L2 is the next resonance. Because the length of the loop has to stay the same, that means uh, this half loop must be the same length over here. So it must look like this with one extra loop in here, one and a half loops inside. Now you can try to draw the wave for L3. Again, the length of loop should stay the same. So, it must be like this. Same one and a half loops, and then one extra loop. So two and a half loops inside. To find the speed of sound in air, we just have to use the frequency 512 times the wavelength. So we have to find the wavelength so we can find the speed. In our last lesson, we could say that L1 is 15 centimeters, 0.15 meters, and that's half a loop. And then, and one loop is always half a wavelength. So we can get wavelength this way. But in this lab, we have other pieces of data that can give us a more accurate wavelength than this. So we're not going to do it this way. And yes, you can lose points if you do this on the AP exam. The thing is, L1 may not be exactly half a loop. Depending on the wavelength and the size, the thickness of the tube, L1 can be a little more or a little less than half a loop. So it is more accurate for us to use the length of complete loops to find the wavelength. So let's see, for this complete loop, it must be 48 centimeters minus 15, because that's 48 centimeters, this is 15 centimeters. So from L2 and L1, we can find the length of one loop is 
0.48 minus 0.15, which is 0.33. And from L3, we can find the length of two loops if we just use L3 minus L1. So the length of two loops equals to 0.82 cent. 82 centimeters, 0.82 minus 0.15, which is 0.67. And then I can take average. So I can add these two together. That means I get three loops equals to one. So the length of one loop is one third of a meter. And one loop is always half a wavelength. That means the wavelength must be two-thirds of a meter. So we can put this over here, two-thirds of a meter. We can get the speed of sound in air, in this case, to be 341.3 meters per second. So this is the answer in part A. And then in part B, now this speed is really close to the 340 meters per second. In fact, the percentage difference, the difference is 1.3, and then if I divide it by 340, I get only 0.38%. That's the percentage difference between the two numbers. So if the experimental uncertainty is larger than 0.38%, we will not be able to decide whether the temperature in the lab is higher, lower, or equal to 15 degrees Celsius. However, if the speed is really an accurate 341.3 meters per second, then we can say that the temperature in the lab must be higher than 15 degrees Celsius. Because for speed of sound in air, the higher the temperature, the higher the root mean square speed, the higher the speed of sound in air.